Hello, everybody. It is Sunday, May 5th, 2019. Guess what that means? That's right, y'all. It means I'm 40. I'm 40. Oh, I'm 40. Actually, I think I've got like an hour left. I think I was born like nine-ish, 9.30. So I might have, I might have another hour left. Um, hi everybody. Oh, thank you guys so much. Thank you. I keep, first of all, like everybody, texts and messages and phone calls and I mean, everybody thank you so much for all of the happy birthdays. I can't get back to all of you like it, just don't have time to. Um, but thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I think um, what I've loved so much is that everyone who's 40 is like, oh girl, it's awesome. Like you're gonna love it, you're gonna kill it, it's gonna be great. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really excited about that. So thank you very, very much. So um, I hope everyone had a great weekend because hot dog here in Northern Illinois, it was pretty freaking amazing. And like, like eight minutes ago, is it like pouring down rain where you are right now? Pouring down rain. Actually, I think I'm going to shut this window. Hold on guys. better shut the window because you never know okay so yes pouring down rain um but we had a great a great great weekend sunshine fills my heart like nothing else fills my heart so today I was um I got a beautiful message from a friend who sent me a video message which I love because um oh no I am a hot mess at 40 um she sent me a beautiful message, 40 things she loved about me or 40 things that I am. It was so cool and awesome. And I like got so teary eyed and I thought it was beautiful and wonderful. And she did alphabetical, which made my heart happy too. Um, so it got me thinking like all the things I've learned and over the last couple years since I've been on this like personal growth kind of journey and so I wrote them down in crayon. Why in crayon, you say? Well, Cole and I were coloring. <laughs> and all of these things came into my head. And so I wrote them down in crayon. And I only had orange, yellow, and green. And so I can't really see them that well. But I thought I'd share them all with you. And um, if I miss any of them or something that you think is really important, please tell me. I would love to hear what you learned when you were in our wise years, our wise 40 years. Um, that Carter told me I was halfway to 80 today. I was like, oh, well, I guess. I guess I'm halfway to 80. Whatever. Uh, so 40 things. I think they're 40 things. I, like, started going off and, like, I don't know. There might be a little more. So, I don't know. So, the first thing, in no specific order, um, is that anxiety is a bitch, right? That anxiety shows up for people in different ways. It shows up as anger. It shows up as, like, shyness. It shows up as irritability. It shows up as many different things. And if somebody's crabby, if somebody doesn't want to do something, if somebody blows up at you, um, it's probably not your fault. It's probably has nothing to do with you. That's all inside. Um, hangman with this six year old, um, isn't always cut and dry and you have to be a little creative with your spelling and you should let them win. Um, another one is, if nobody, I have this book here because I read on my bedstand. Okay, another one, if you guys have not read this book, it's a short, short read, and I suggest everybody read it. Um, 
It's called The Five Love Languages. Um, this one happens to be for children, um, but there's a five love languages, a generic one for like your partner, your spouse, your wife, your husband, whatever. Um, it's a quick, quick read, but there's a thing that you have five, that you have a love language and you need to speak to people in their love language, which isn't always your love language, which I have learned huh, that. <laughs> Ben and I do not have the same love languages. So I have to be very intentional about showing him I love him so he can, in a way that he understands. Um, same with my kids. I bought this one um, because it's the kid one because these kiddos are getting older and I feel like sometimes um, we're not on the same page either. <laughs> so great, great book. Um, so if anybody... Um, knows what the Enneagram is. Does anybody know what the Enneagram is? Yeah, halfway to 80, Lisa. Anyone know what number they are on the Enneagram? I am a number eight on the Enneagram. And for anybody who knows what a number eight is, it's like the monster. It's like you're direct. You want everyone to be direct with you. I don't know why what I would say would hurt your feelings because I would want you to say that to me. And I don't need to hurt your feelings, but that's just how it is. Um, and that I might not always be right. Um, I've learned that, that I'm not always right. There is another way to do things. Pretty sure my way would be faster, but I'm willing to hear other people's ways now because I'm old and wise. Um, another thing is that if you have gifts, if God gave you a gift, if he gave you, um, he put something in your heart or somebody says, gosh, you're really good at that. Or um, you have like a creative outlet or you are good at, do I don't know, whatever you're good at, you have a gift. Don't suppress your gifts. Let them out. Let them out. If it's dancing, dance. If it's singing, sing. If it's, I don't know, whatever. Do it. You are given a gift. You are the only you in the whole freaking world ever that will ever be you, ever. And you are beautifully, perfectly, wonderfully made with a gift, so freaking use it. Um, another thing I've learned is that my parents and my family's issues are not my issues. And this one is a recent one. <laughs> that I didn't even know. Um, sometimes you have to really look back and go deep and I don't know, that their issues um, are not mine and that whatever they projected onto me or growing up in as a child, um, that those are not mine. They had no in bad intentions, they had no bad intentions. But as parents, we do that and you know what we do, um, they see and their issues that they put on us are not mine. And I'm a grown up and so I have the power to say that was then, that is not now. That is not my now. That is not my now. Um, that, another thing I've learned is that I am capable of whatever I want. I am not stuck in any circumstance that I don't want to be in. Um, I'm capable of moving, of getting out of it, of doing whatever I want. I'm not, you know, I, I'm, I can, we have free will. I can do whatever I want. So I'm capable of it. Um, as far as information and not knowing how to do something, that's BS because it's 2019. And there's like a whole, like, I mean, universe, plethora of credible resources, um, videos, anything you want to know how to do, you can do it. It's garbage excuse if you say there's not enough information or, oh, I didn't go to college. Listen, the stuff that you need to know, they don't teach you in college. Okay. okay. Ah, what else? Um, oh. A few great friends are better than a lot of okay friends. 
and I've been pretty blessed that I have, so, oh, I think I have a lot of really great people in my life and they all kind of serve a different purpose and gosh, they're just amazing. That brings me to another thing I learned is that if you are driving along one day or you're doing your everyday tasks or um, whatever and somebody pops into your brain, um, to me, I feel like that's God saying like that person needs you or um, I don't know. So if somebody pops into your brain, call them, send them a text, a video text, an audio text just saying, hey, I don't know, I'm just thinking about you. Like, how are you? Because I don't think we ask each other enough, how are you? Because what do we say? Fine. How are you? I'm good. So busy. <laughs> Everybody's so freaking busy. But I mean, are you? So um, people just want to connect. Connection is like our number one thing that we need, um, you know, after like food and shelter. Um, we need connection. Um, so if somebody's like pops into your brain, like, oh, send them a message and tell them that you're thinking of them. You wouldn't, you'd be super surprised as how awesome it makes them feel. Um, oh, this is my favorite. <laughs> this kind of goes along with the other one. Um, that you get to choose your family. When you're a grown up, you get to choose your family and which I think is awesome. So I don't have a lot of family, like blood family. Um, but man, I have people that are in my heart forever and they are my family. I get to pick, I get to choose who I want to spend my time with and I get to pick the people that I invest in and, um, choose as my family. It's awesome. It's called being a grown up. It's really cool. Um, um, yes. I, and another thing is to whatever, um, whatever spirit, universe, religious figure that you believe in, be open to whatever is coming your way. Um, I feel like sometimes we put up these barriers um, that say, no, this is my life and this is what I have to do and I have to do this and this is my job and blah, blah. <sighs> take a deep breath, take a deep breath, let down your guard um, and just say, I'm open, like bring it, bring it. You made me wonderfully, I am capable and I am open to what you are here to show me what I should see. There's this thing that says like, oh, you ask, you ask God for something, you ask him for say a hundred dollars. Well, you need a hundred dollars and he sends this man or he see, you see all these like, <clears throat> um, a bag of like old pop cans and somebody like asks you, oh, do you want all these bags, these bags of pop cans? You're like, no, I don't want garbage. Well, like there was your hundred bucks. Like you're not being open. So like God will give you what you need when you ask for it, but you have to be open to what it means when things start coming. Like break down all the barriers, all those like misconceptions. This is gonna be long guys. I'm gonna keep going quickly. Um, <laughs> um, oh, if you don't like something, you can change it. Anything. Your hair, gray hair, you can uh, change your makeup. You can whiten your teeth. You can get new girls. You can cut things off. You can um, change your nails. You can pierce your eye. I mean, you can do whatever you want. You can change it. It's your body who gives a rat's butt about anybody else because you get to wake up every morning and look at it and be comfortable with yourself. So if you want a tattoo on your face, I mean, put a tattoo on your face. If it's gonna make you live your best life, tat it up, girl. Okay, um, what else? Um, be scared. So when you are asking God for all these things in your life and you finally kind of get an opportunity, it's scary, right? But the defini definition of courage is you do it anyway with while being scared. So do it scared. And then there's no regrets. There's no saying like, oh gosh, I wish I would have done it. Well, you don't know. And that leads me to another thing. Um, oh, I wish I would have asked. Every answer to a question you didn't ask is no. 
it's always worth an ask. The answer is always no if you don't ask. So just ask and just go for it. Okay. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Once you let go of other people's opinions, life gets better. And there are people that I care about their opinions. Yes, the people that are closest to me, absolutely. Um, but other people that I don't, you know, or people that aren't pursuing their best life or doing what I'm trying to do, their opinion, if they're not in it with me, then I don't care. It has no bearing on what I'm, what I'm trying to do. <clears throat> um, oh, I've also learned that when I eat and drink to fuel my body, I get shit done. Okay. I'm so, I swear all the time. I'm sorry if your kids are watching, um, if they're in the room. Um, but when I drink a ton of water and not a lot of coffee, um, and I eat vegetables and protein and fruits and fats and good stuff and I do not eat processed garbage junk with garbage in it I feel amazing and I wake up 5 15 every morning sometimes it's 4 45 um ready to go ready to start my day I have energy all day long because I fuel my body because I have stuff to do I have stuff to do. Not only do I have babies to take care of, but I have stuff to do to help people and help other people find this and leave a legacy for my family. And I can't do that if I'm eating Whoppers and the dollar menu and God, I can't. You can't do that. Your body's like, what are you doing? Which leads me to another thing that I have learned is to, um, oh gosh, where did I put that one? What did I say? Oh, is that, that you get what you pay for. Value versus cost. So in my 20s and even a little bit, what is this guy sticking up? In my 30s, um, where I was like, I don't know, it costs so much. Okay, but you get what you pay for. Like you buy, we, we didn't spend a lot of money on a couch because we knew that we had babies and like a dog and it was gonna get trashed and so we didn't, spend a lot on it because we knew its purpose. And guess what? It's trashed. And we spent a lot of money on a really nice couch about 14 years ago, and that baby looks amazing. You get what you pay for, and the value of something is what you should be looking at, not the cost. If you have to replace something every three years, but it was cheaper than if you would have just paid it up front, save your money, and pay for the good one. Ugh. And in your health, guess what? Another thing I learned is we're going to die. We are going to die. So value the one and only body you have, value what you put in it, and value good food, healthy food that makes your body run effectively, efficiently, and as it was designed. And yes, unfortunately, that costs money. It sucks. I wish I could change it, but there's a whole world of marketers out there who have made cheap, disgusting food and made it easy for us. So it shouldn't be a question of how much does it cost. It should be a question of what's the value to me. I could go on that one for a long time. Anyway, um, oh, this one's a tough one for me. And I try to teach it to my oldest son. And I'm, we're still learning it together. But sometimes not talking is the best thing ever. To just stop talking. Because any of you out there with children who are like tweens, teenagers, if they would just stop talking, if they would just shut it down, they probably wouldn't be in so much trouble. And I've learned that with myself to be a better listener. I have to stop talking and I'm working on that one. But at least I know it, right? I'm aware of it. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Um, oh, Here's another one. 
stop buying dumb shit. Stop it. Stop buying stupid stuff that you do not need. There's so much garbage, you guys. You don't need, you don't need it. You don't need stuff. You don't need stuff. Save your money. Buy stuff that's going to help you live a longer life. Make memories with your children. Leave a legacy. Do all of these fun things. Invest in your future. Invest in your children. Invest in your marriage. Um, but stop buying crap. Stop buying stuff just to freaking buy stuff. I mean, I, it's really hard for me because I don't, I'm not one to care about like brands, fancy cars. Um, I don't, I don't care. And so it's really hard for me when I hear people have this like $500 car payment, and, but they can't go on vacation or they can't, they don't, they can't come up with the hundred bucks to send their kids. I just, it blows me away. So stop buying stupid shit and put your money away. Um, whoo, my gosh. Um, yes. If you, uh, oh yes. And this is one of my favorites. So, um, say hi to people. I shouldn't even have to like have learned this. Like just say hi to people. I've learned that if you are walking somewhere or you're, um, at a restaurant or you're um, ordering something from somebody or you're somewhere and you say like, and you see their name tag, like, hey, hey Lisa, how are you today? They're like, hey, I'm good. And they smile because they had a crabby face. But if you ask how they are, it's freaking amazing what it does for somebody's attitude. And you're like, oh, nobody just, nobody's asked them how they're doing today because we're so busy and we're in the freaking phone all the time. That's another one, but I won't go on that one either. Woo! Oh, and that, this kind of goes at that. I don't know everybody's story. I don't know why the person in front of me cut me off. I don't know why that person's crabby. Maybe their kid's in the hospital. Maybe their kid's sick. Maybe their wife's going into labor. Maybe somebody close to them is dying. Maybe they're, um, they don't have any gas and they're trying to like get to the gas station quick. I don't know, but I don't know everyone's story and it's not for me to judge while they're being, why they're being crabby. Um, that's just not my job. Okay. Um, money is not bad. Money is not bad. Money is not bad. Money amplifies your general character. So if you're a mean person and you get a lot of money, you're probably going to be even meaner. If you're a nice, generous, kind person and you start making money, you're going to be generous and kind. So good people making good money is awesome. It's amazing. It's amazing because we get to do really fun things with money. So make the money, make the money. Don't feel bad about it. Our parents put this thing in our head that, oh, rich people would have been nice and home must be nice. Yeah, it is. It is nice for them because they're doing kick-ass things with it. And when the water heater breaks down, it's not the end of the world. They get to go buy a new water heater. I don't know. Money's not bad. I don't know. Um, be bold. If you have an offering, if you have a gift, if you have something that you think is awesome, um, you want to share, be bold. Why not? Cause guess what? We're going to die. Um, oh, I've also learned that I belong in sunshine. Like I belong in the sunshine. I was born in the wrong region of the United States. Just saying, um, guess what guys? I don't drink diet Coke. A memory popped up, I think it was yesterday or sometime this week, about me trying to battle my Diet Coke. And I was like, ah, I don't drink Diet Coke. I kept telling myself, guess what guys, I don't drink Diet Coke. Not, oh, I can't drink Diet Coke. I love it, but I can't have it. No, I don't drink Diet Coke. And guess what guys, tortilla chips, who knows my tortilla chip love. Guess what guys, I don't care about tortilla chips. I mean, they're everywhere. I don't care about them. It's no big deal. I don't care because I don't care about tortilla chips. Guess what happens? Words are powerful. Words are freaking powerful. They're powerful to what we say to ourselves and what we say to other people. And every night before we go to bed with the boys, they say a thing. They say, I'm kind, calm, and peaceful. I'm enough just the way I am and I'm loved. And I speak kindly to myself and others. Yeah, say it every day. What you don't want to do, a bad habit you'd like to untangle and not be part of your life, 
I don't like donuts. I don't eat donuts. I don't eat donuts. I don't drink Diet Coke. My <laughs> head's freaking amazing. Um, and guess what? I don't get a headache the minute I, you know, like I, that was my thing. I would get this like headache every time I had a sip of Diet Coke. And I don't know if it was like the psychosomatic thing or whatever, but I was like, this is, why do I keep doing this? It's horrible. If I got a headache from anything else I did, I would stop doing it and I just stopped doing it because I don't drink Diet Coke. Oh yeah. Okay. Anyway. Oh, this is the big one. I am an average of the five people I surround myself with. This is a toughie because I've read a lot of books. I've listened to a lot of people say that you are the average of the five people you surround yourself with. If the people you surround yourself with that you hang out with the most are bad in their finances, they're broke. If they're broke in their health, if they have a scarcity mindset, if they hate their husband, if they hate their job, what do you think you're gonna talk about? What do you think, where do you think you're gonna go when you're together? So as I've grown up, I've realized that I love all, I love my people, but I can spend three minutes with them, three hours or three days. There's people that fit into those categories and um, there have been some people over my last, you know, I can think of my last 20 years that they didn't like their husband and Ben and I would always fight after I hung out with them because she didn't like her husband. And so I felt like I had to chime in about mine and my husband's freaking great. So I don't have that relationship anymore and that's okay. Um, marriage is work, right? Marriage is work. It is work. And I think when you get married, you're like, oh, we love each other love will pay the bills and love is amazing and it's work yeah you love each other you have to love each other but man you got to be able to grow and push and pull and be willing you have to like be in it because it's work but it's like the best it's the best ever um oh another one not everyone wants my advice sometimes they just want me to listen and that goes along with the whole like stop talking. Yeah, I do. Some people don't want my advice because again, Enneagram eight. So I feel like I have to like tell you, like my way is the right way, my way is not the right way. Um, I've also learned sunscreen is important. It should be in your moisturizer, ladies and men. Just find a nice moisturizer with an SPF at least thirty in it. Okay, put it on your kids, put it on your babies, put it on yourself. Um, another thing I've learned is that I love to travel alone. I love going to the airport by myself. I love flying by myself. I love getting in an Uber by myself. I love checking into the hotel by myself. I freaking love traveling by myself. I love it. I love it so much. I love it. Um, that I love to dance. And gangster rap motivates me. 90s gangster rap. And I will continue to play that when I'm folding laundry and doing dishes um, when there's no one around. And I will sing. And I will probably dance inappropriately. But nobody's there and I get my stuff done. Um, this is a weird one. That I'm okay. I don't want another baby. And that probably sounds weird to some people. But I, there was a time in my life when I thought I would always want another baby. That I couldn't have enough babies. I just wanted more. And every time I saw a baby, I was, I'd was i be sad that I didn't get to have another one. And guess what? I'm not. <laughs> I'm not sad. I'm so happy with our family. And when I see a newborn now, I'm like, oh, praise Jesus. Thank you for the healthy, beautiful boys you have given me and having enough sense to stop because this mama does not have enough patience for another little one. I don't. Okay, I'm almost done. I promise. I mean, maybe. I am almost done. Almost done. Okay. Um, oh, I also learned that I don't want to work for someone else's dream. So, you know, for years and what I grew up knowing is that you go to work Monday through Friday, somebody pays you, you live for Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday, and you do it again Monday through Friday. 
and somebody else is getting paid and I'm getting the same check every week. And I've decided that I do not like that. Why should I work 40 hours a week for somebody else's dream when I could work 40 hours a week for my freaking dream? This is me, right? Like, does, does it make sense when you think about it that way? Of course you would work 40 hours for your dream. It's weird. I don't know. That took a while to get. I don't know. Um, another one. Oh, no one's family is perfect. Amen? Amen out there? Nobody's family is perfect. Nobody's family is perfect. I had a friend in high school who thought her family was perfect. And she called me one time and said, you have to come over. My parents are fighting. I don't know what to do because my parents fought all the time. So it was like, I was like, well, big deal. Or I mean, who cares? But it was a big deal to her. So I'm thinking her family's like perfect. Well, you know, years later, they're not. And nobody's family's perfect. It's, uh, they're not. And it's good to know that. I don't know. That's just what I learned. Um, well, oh, you don't have to like everyone. You do not have to like everyone. You don't have to be mean to everyone. You have to be polite and use manners, but you don't have to like everyone. Like, say that out loud. You don't have to like everyone. Say, I don't have to like everyone. Doesn't that like free your soul? I don't have to like everyone. I don't have to like everybody. I don't, I can't be mean, but you don't have to like them. And I think that's important to tell our kids. Everybody's a friend when you're in school, all of our friends. Well, not everybody's a friend and you don't have to like them, but you can't be mean, you have to be respectful and kind, but you don't have to be their friend. So that's one that we try to teach to our kids, but it's hard because they get so many conflicting messages, right? That's a hard one, but as a grown up, it's pretty freaking awesome. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, this is another one. Um, children listen when you don't want them to. And they don't listen when you want them to. And they do what you do, not what you say. Amen? Amen. Because I see a reflection of myself when I'm talking to my 10-year-old. And I try to tell him all the things, but it doesn't matter. Because when I talk to him like that, of course he's going to talk to me like that. So Ben and I have to keep our little checks and balances system going on. Like, hey, babe, babe. And he's like, Audra. I'm like, okay. So they do what we do, not what we say. They listen. They just listen when we don't want them to. Um, another thing is, oh, I don't drink my calories. Um, I... I I don't drink alcohol. I feel like I drank a lot, like, you know, when I probably wasn't, like, legally supposed to. Um, and I just don't anymore. So, like, I don't, that's, like, not my thing. Like, people have a thing that in drinking is not my thing. Um, but, so, like, I don't drink alcohol, not because I don't want to drink calories, just because, like, I have stuff to do and I get really bad hangovers and I, like, can't waste a whole day. But anyway, um... But like fufu coffee drinks, um, and like the even like the fruity alcoholic drinks, like I would rather have like a really good meal instead of 400, 500 calories on a frappuccino coffee mocha latte with a, with a whip in a drizzle. Um, so yeah, that I don't drink my calories. Um, okay. I think that's it. And oh yeah, I'm going to die. And I think I, to me, it's, it's funny that I say I'm going to die because I think when you're younger, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to die. But no, like now I'm going to die. I'm going to die. And if I don't do what I want to do now, I could die tomorrow. Not doing what I want to do. Getting up on a Monday for somebody else's dream. I could, you know, not take the trip or spend 
$50,000 on a car and not go on vacation and I could die tomorrow because I'm going to die. So yeah, that's it. That's my list. I'm pretty sure it was more than 40. Maybe it wasn't. Um, I have so many good books on my nightstand, guys. If you ever need a book to read, if you ever need a podcast, um, let me know. I don't really know Netflix. Um, I don't know Ben's watching a baseball game. I think it's the Cubs. Um, yeah, if you need any suggestions like that, let me know. But that's it. I'm 40. And I don't know. It's going to be okay. I woke up today. That was great. And I didn't feel different. And tomorrow's Monday. It's Carter's birthday tomorrow. Tomorrow, Carter, my first baby, is going to be 11. I think that's what makes me feel old. Like, I don't feel old that I'm 40. I feel old that I have an 11-year-old who's going to sixth grade next year. When he smells, smells. One day, when these videos are out there and he can, like, pull me up, he's going to be so mad at me, right? Okay, that's it. That's it. I'm going to leave now, and I'm going to go enjoy the last couple hours of my birthday. And that's it. So again, thank you all for the beautiful, beautiful birthday wishes. Um, I hope you all feel as loved as I did today on your special day. And if somebody pops in your head tomorrow, give them a message. Tell them you're thinking about them. And that's it. Okay, sorry it went so long, but I got a lot going on in here. Yeah, okay, all right, goodbye.